which is called a conical pendulum. This right here is called a conical pendulum. And we're going to analyze this situation. We're going to figure out some stuff about it. So this is the visual, the conical pendulum. So it looks like this. We have the stop run a string. It is rotating at some angle theta. The string has some length L. So we know L and theta. And we are trying to find the velocity at which it will maintain the same angle. If we increase the velocity, the angle will increase. If we decrease the velocity, the angle will decrease. So we're moving at some sort of constant tangential velocity that will keep the conical pendulum moving at this angle. Flanagan, what do we do next? Uh, sum the forces. Can't. Or, uh, no, uh, draw a free body diagram. There we're going to go. We're going to start with a free body <laughs> diagram. Please, Mr. Reed. Free body diagram. Uh, tension along the string. Along the string. If you recall, tension is always in the direction of the string. Keep going. Uh, force of gravity down. Force of gravity is down. There is your free body diagram. We're done drawing the free body diagram. Next, what are we going to do? Stephanie? So, Can't. Go ahead. Break forces into components. Okay. Before we figure out what forces, what, how we're going to break things into components, what directions are we going to sum the forces in? Because this is the key piece here. So, in what direction are we going to sum the forces in? One of my favorite questions. Benedict. Uh, in, the in the in direction. Okay. Therefore, what are we going to break into components? Katie. The force of gravity, actually, we're not going to break into components. Why are we not going to break the force of gravity into components? Actually, let's start with this. Sorry, I think it will help with the answer to that question. Which is, take a moment, and I've drawn the stopper when it's right here. With your index finger, point in the in direction, please, right now. Okay. You should be pointing horizontally. Right? Some of you are pointing along the string. The indirection, the circle it makes, is a circle in this plane. Right? So the indirection is going to be directly this way. So why then are we not breaking the force of gravity into its components? Emily X. I agree with that. I want more, because the force of gravity isn't going in the indirection, Jay. It's so not only, gonna, not only are we going to sum the forces in the indirection, but we're going to sum the forces perpendicular to the indirection, which is in the y direction. The force of gravity is already in the y direction. So what then are we breaking into components, Evan? The tension on the string. The tension on the string. So we're going to break the tension into its components. Into the we're going to break it into tension in. I'll do it this way. I think it's easier to see. Nah, I'll do it this way. More fun. We're going to do the tension in the y direction and the tension in the in direction. This angle is theta, the same angle. Uh, it's the ulterior in, alternate interior angle theorem or something. So we can break the tension into its components. Please do so. Jessica? I'm sorry? We're going to break tension into its components. Could you please break it into components? Uh, yes. Good. Tension, uh, team, uh, no, tension in the y direction. Trust me, just do the sine and cosine. Just start with so or ha. Okay. Uh, tension equals so <laughs> or ha. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. That's okay. She's she's lost and confused. I confused her. Uh, Sydney, help her out. Over 
Therefore, tension in the indirection is going to be equal to tension times the sine of theta. Jessica, you see what we were doing? Yeah. Sorry, confused you. Therefore, cosine of theta is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent to our theta is tension in the y direction divided by tension. Therefore, tension in the y direction is equal to tension times the cosine of theta. We have drawn our free body diagram. We have broken forces into components. What should we do next, Carlo? We should redraw the Redraw the free body diagram. We now have the force of gravity, the tension in the in direction, and the tension in the y direction. We have drawn our free body diagram. We have broken force on our free body diagram. Maria, uh, Maria what would you like to do next? Okay, go ahead. Tension in the y direction. Equal. Keep going. Because it's not moving up or down in the y direction. Good, keep going. Yep. Good, one more step before we do something different. One more step before we do something different. If you tell me what it is, just. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was, was going to use, wait, sure, we could use the equation holster, but let me do this first. Can I do this first? Go ahead. Okay, we have the tension times the cosine of theta equals mass times the acceleration of gravity. Okay, now we can put it in our equation holster. Because we can't do anything else with it, right? So we put it in our equation holster. <laughs> to save it for later. What we do? Okay, so we've drawn our free body diagram. We put forces into its components. We redrew the free body diagram. We sum the forces in the y direction. Connie, next. Um, so now we're going to do it in the in direction, right? Sure. So to sum the forces in the in direction, the only force is tension in which is constant. And then can we set that equal to? Something? I'm going to stop you for a second. Regardless of how I have drawn, have drawn this, it's going to be positive. Uh, I could have also drawn the picture like this, and we would have had the tension and the force of gravity, and this would have been the in direction, right? But then it still would have been in, even though it was to the left, so it would still have positive. Good, Con? Uh, and then because it's the sum of flux, oh, you kind of backed it. And then? I, in general, I put them when we're doing a definition, but it gets too oh, tedious okay. to do it every time throughout. So um, you can make that equal to mass times tangential velocity squared. Aha! Let's do centripetal acceleration. Let's just start with the first equation. Okay. So substitute now. Okay. Yes, Connie, keep going. Um, You're doing an excellent job. So for tension in the inwards, that also equals to tension times sine of Okay. Equals to mass times acceleration. Right, but since it's not centripetal acceleration, let's use. Show Over the right. Good. From here, Sarah. Sure. Okay. Because that's our goal in the end is to solve for the tangential velocity. So we have then the radius times the tangent, the t uh, tension times the sine of theta equals mass times the tangential velocity squared. Therefore, the tangential velocity is equal to radius tension sine theta over the mass, the square root of. That looks kind of ugly. What now, Michael? Where? I don't know what to do. Keep going. Okay. We've already done something like that. Right? Oh, okay. I was going to say, um, find an equation. Find an equation for theta? For the radius. For the radius. Okay. So we have an issue here, the radius, right? So notice what he's talking about here is the fact that the radius is going to be this distance here. 
right? So we need to kind of draw another picture to solve for that radius. So let's do that. We have the length of the theta and the radius. Go ahead, Michael. Now I understand where you're going. Thank you. Therefore, the radius is equal to length times the sine of theta. And yes, we can substitute that in. We now get the tangential velocity is equal to L times the sine of theta times the tension times the sine of theta divided by mass, the square root of. Okay. What else? Land? Um, let me stop you for a second. Let me ask this question. Who can tell me what's wrong with the answer we have at the moment? Why is this not a possible answer? Andrew Carl? Because we don't have mass. Uh, we don't know mass. We don't know tension, right? The only things we know are L and theta, so we can't leave mass and tension in there. Lynn? So, uh... Dad, I did the whole walk and everything. Didn't I? That's okay. Should I help him out? You can use the equation in our holster and solve for tension. Wow. In our equation holster, we have this piece. Uh, but yes, as you said, we should solve for tension. So tension is equal to the mass times the acceleration of gravity divided by the cosine of theta. Therefore, we get length sine squared theta times the tension, which was mass times the acceleration due to gravity, all of that divided by mass times the cosine of theta. Mass cancels out the square root of, therefore we get that the tangential velocity is equal to L sine squared theta times G divided by the cosine of theta, so the square root of. Right? like about this problem? Any numbers? Uh, remember that no numbers dependency you had last year? I use that in the past tense even though I know for some of you that's still not true. You will have to let go of it, right? There will be many problems on the AP test where they don't give you any numbers because, I mean, really, the numbers are irrelevant here. It's the physics that's the important piece. So if you end up with an answer, yes, that's square root of L times the sine squared theta times G divided by cosine of theta. And that's right. 